everyone, Lindsay here for Nerd News Social at LA Comic Con with Steve E. Gordon. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. I would love to list everything you've done, but I think that would take longer than you would allow us for this interview. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Do you want to just tell the people who may not know a couple key things that you had the most fun doing? Well, most fun, but maybe and maybe not, but I, <laughs> I'm best known for uh, X-Men Evolution being the character designer and one of the directors. Uh, being the character designer and key animator on Swan Princess. Uh, I was also the character designer on um, uh, Ultimate Avengers and one of the directors. And I worked on Fire and Ice way back in the uh, early 80s. It's was also one of the directors on the Adventures of Mighty Mouse. And I can go on, but right, I'm, that, the that's pretty enough. On. Yeah. Well, you've mentioned a few interesting properties, all seemingly to be, you know, very kind of more masculine and more um, action-based, and then you got some things that are a little more feminine, like Swan Princess. How is it that you're able to, is, how hard is that to just be able to do such different properties? Uh, I don't know. I don't think about it too much. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of think of myself not so much as an action guy, even though I get labeled that. It's more of a uh, character person. I mean, I, I, my strength is usually doing character as opposed to action. Um, I can do the action stuff, obviously, but uh, I kind of work. My, my sweet spot is the character dynamics between characters and, you know, how they relate to one another. So I think that kind of allows me to flip around from genre to genre. And also, you've done so many different types of jobs, storyboarding, directing, character design. Is there one you have more fun doing than the other? And also, is there something you haven't done yet that you would be wanting to do? Uh, well, to answer your first question, I have the most fun actually doing story, whether it's being a storyboard artist or a director, which they both do that. But usually, uh, that's only in features. Uh, in TV, you don't get a lot of opportunity to be a uh, storyteller. You just have to follow the script for the most part. Um, and what I'd love to do is direct in features, but I don't see that happening anytime in the future at this point. So. Well, who knows, with the, all the different types of things yeah. going on with technology. It, it, it could happen, but I'm not. That I'm no longer aiming there. I'm just aiming to retire or something. <laughs> so. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> So what's very interesting is uh, the way you got into the animation business because you kind of skipped a key point, uh, art school. Yeah, <laughs> I did not go. To, I was actually planning on going to art school and I ended up getting hired out of high school. A lot of us would like to know how you did that. <laughs> it was an accident, actually. Uh, I was starting to get my portfolio ready uh, with my art teacher in high school. And uh, she happened to come across an advertisement in the trade papers for portfolio reviews. And she thought, well, this is a good way for me to get a professional portfolio review and uh, maybe take a little wind out of my sails. And unfortunately, it, she was wrong on both <laughs> accounts because not only did I get the job, which didn't take the wind out of my sails, but there's no way in the world anyone gives a gives you portfolio reviews yes. professionally. They just, either they like it or they don't. And that's it. So she was wrong on both <laughs> times. So. Well, thank goodness for her being wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so your first job, if, I was, if I'm correct, is rotoscoping. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I was hired to work on Lord of the Rings with Ralph Bakshi. And um, basically it was a what we called a rotoscope movie, which means he shot it all in live action first and then the animators would take the uh, live action photo stats or the photographs and um, rework it and reference it to create the animation. The same method that Disney's been using since Snow White. I mean, Snow White was rotoscoped and they've used it all the way up until their last 2D film. So it's nothing unusual in the world of animation, but it's the, the difference, big difference is that Ralph uh, let everyone know that he was doing that. And so it got into the papers and it pissed off a lot of older animators from Disney. And so. But that was my first job, was I was 
started working on that and worked my way up pretty quickly to actually being able to animate on that film. So you also kind of, I guess, learned your way up, right? Yeah. Because, uh, so were you maybe being able to see other animators and talk with them to learn? Because I doubt they're yeah. just like, okay, do character designs now. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't do character design yeah. on that film by yeah. any means. That, the character design on that film was done by Daryl Bear, we would say. It's still working at Disney's now, but uh, that film, uh, what I did is I was originally brought in to help work the orcs, and anyone who's seen the film probably would understand it's basically the orcs were shot live action. They weren't referenced so much as they were just put on high con acetate, and then he, Ralph hired a bunch of people to add fangs and claws and horns and whatever else to them, and eventually at some point they needed someone to help one of the uh, 2D animators do some in-betweens and so they put me in that position I worked with uh, an animator for a while learning how to do in-betweens and then eventually Ralph gave me a big long hundred foot scene of uh, Gandalf and Aragorn riding a horse riding horses and so that was my first actual scene of animation albeit with rotoscope. Wow that's amazing being able to be in the right place, right time, meeting yeah. someone. Yeah, I mean, that's most of this job is being in the right place at the right time. So, <laughs> so you've been in the industry quite a while, and we talked a little bit about rotoscoping, how Disney still uses that technique. Is there anything that you've noticed change to get better or maybe get worse throughout the years of entertainment, the way things are done? Oh, I don't know. It, it, it's always evolving. Uh, I mean, frankly, at this point, rotoscope is still being used in a way. It's just the uh, the old-fashioned way of uh, motion capture. Now motion capture is the new rotoscope, which they use in CG animation all the time. Um, but, you know, th things change and they don't change. You know, we're still telling stories and whatnot. You know, uh, the, the nicer thing that's happened recently since CG films have become uh, prominent is that other studios are now able to actually have hits. For a long time during the 80s and 90s, the only studio that was able to make a hit of animation was Disney. And with an occasional one here and there, like a blue film here and there and whatnot. Even Swan Princess was not a big hit at all. Um, but now, all types of studios are having luck with CG animation. So that in itself is nice. Oh, so just a couple last questions. I know you got to get back to your booth. We kind of stole him. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any like advice that you've given other people who want to get into the animation industry that might be helpful for our viewers? Well, the first thing I tell anyone who wants to get into it is marry well, <laughs> because it, it's a very difficult business to stay employed in. And you have to work really hard at it. And there will be lean times, and so if you. I mean, it's a silly response, but it's true. If you've got someone outside of the business that you could be married to that has a stable job, you'll be a lot happier. Support is key. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that way you don't have to, if you're both out of work, struggling to find an animation job, you're in trouble. So, But it, the main thing is just, nowadays, it's a lot different how you learn and get into the business. Now you have to go to school and learn all the functions of uh, computer animation and stuff and my day you could just learn if you drew well enough you could learn things from other animators now you have to actually learn all those computer programs and stuff so that's pretty mandatory so and do you want to tell us maybe about some personal projects or any current projects you're working on uh, I can't tell you about any current things because they're all NDA but I can tell you that I just recently finished a comic book for a uh, a company called Sit Comics that's called The Headhunter. So that's out now. Um, and um, doing some miscellaneous development things here and there. I'm working on a development of uh, another comic book that I had nothing to do with it, but me and a partner have optioned uh, Bomb Queen uh, by Jimmy Robinson, and we're developing that for a TV series and pitching that around town. So we're doing some stuff. Sounds like you're nowhere close to retirement. No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm hoping I'm closer than that. But, uh, we'll see. Well, it all sounds very fun. Do you want to tell anyone anything else or where they can find you online? Yeah, I mean, I'm all over on uh, 
social networking. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram and Tumblr, even though I've never figured out Tumblr yet, but uh, but I'm all over. If you if you Google me, Stephen E. Gordon, you, you'll find me online pretty easily. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this has been Lindsay for Nerd News Social over at LA Comic Con, and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.